In this video, we're going to be working with raster data. So we're going to use the QGIS Python interface and GDAL to get data from a raster layer. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to open a raster layer and add it to QGIS. So I should have one. Let's use the one in SMR and Trimmer Peak and the DEM here. So I'll just add that into QGIS. You can see my DEM. I have the DEM in the table of contents. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and open up my Python console and open up my editor. And I am going to just create a new file here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get the file name of this layer that I've added to so the file name of DEM. And if you'll remember, the way we do this is we're going to get all the layers. And the layers equals QGS project.instance. We want to get map layers by name. And the name is DEM. And my layer is going to be the first layer in that list. All right. So I'll just double check this code, make sure I have it right for you. Okay, and that looks like it's correct. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to import GDAL. And GDAL should already be installed uh, with your QGIS Python installation. And so we can just go from OSGO, import GDAL. And what GDAL is, it's the geodata abstract, or geospatial data abstraction library. And so this is used to, to work with raster data. Um, and it's kind of what runs under the hood with a lot of the QGIS raster management. And so with GDAL, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to load the raster data as a NumPy array. And if you remember in the previous video, I showed you how you can get the values for a raster at a certain point, but you could only get it at a raster for a certain point. Um, this is going to allow us to get all the data for a raster so we can perform algorithms on those raster data. So let's go ahead and we're going to start working with GDAL now. So I'm just going to break this code up a little so it's a little more clear. And so we're going to open a GDAL data source. And that data source is going to be this raster file. So I'm going to do my data source is going to equal GDAL.open. And what I need here is I need the file name of this layer. And so I can get that with layer dot data provider dot data source URI. Okay. And this is going to give us the file path of um, this raster over here. So let's just, uh, before we do this, I'm just going to comment that out and we'll grab this line of code and we'll print it out so we can see what that is. And I'll just copy it back in there. So we'll print this out so we can see what it is. And I'm going to check that code first to make sure we don't have an error there. Okay, so that code looks right. Let's go ahead and click run here. Okay, and I'm getting an error. Layers is not defined. Okay, so the problem here is that we need to make this layers and not layer. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and hit run. And we should get that to pop out the file name. Okay, here we go. So here's my file name, C, temp, SMR, trim, peak, DEM, DEM.tiff. So that's our file name. And so now we can just go ahead and get rid of this print line uh, and uh, open this line back up. And that will give us our GDAL data source. Now, once we have our data source, we need to access the data for a raster band. Okay, and I'm going to go over into QGIS here, uh, and I'm going to open up the properties for this raster. And if I go to the information here, we have the width in pixels, the height in pixels, and then we have our dimensions. So it's 42 columns, 45 rows, and one band. And so it's that one band of data that I want to access using GDAL. 
And so the way I do that is I'm going to make this, I'm going to call this DEM ARR for my DEM array. And this is going to equal data source dot get raster band. I want to get band one and then I can read as array. And that will read a numpy array. Okay. And so now let's go ahead and print DEM ARR print our DEM array so we can get an idea of what that looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and click run here and this should work for us. Okay, here we go. So you can see now that what this gives me is a two-dimensional array. So here is the first row of that array. So these are the values for all the columns in the first row. And it gives me these first three values and then a dot, 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 and the last three values. So what these will correspond to is the values in this first row. And this line here corresponds to the values in the last row. So if I, I use my identify tool here, where is my identify tool right there? Then this corner pixel should be this value. So let's go ahead and check it. So 2832.19, 2832.19. I click on the second one and that should match up. Or that should match up here. Can't get off. So there's the third one, 2861.237 and then 2846.3525. So you can see that showing us those pixel values. Okay, well, didn't mean to dock that there. Let's just make this a little bigger so it's a little easier to see for you. Okay, now if I want to get a specific value out of this array, let's say I want to get the first value, I can just use my array indexing. So I can go DEM, ARR, and this is going to be the row. So I want row zero and column zero will give me the first value in that column. So let's go ahead and run that. And what I should get is 2832.1907 to print out. And there it is. And so that's how you can work with NumPy uh, to get the data from a raster band. It's going to be really useful as you want to do some of your own custom algorithms on raster data. Um, and as you want to do some certain analyses. So, like I said, that's how you can get the data out of a raster. We're going to work with this some more in the future. I'm doing some more raster programming and, and looking at how we can get values from rasters and how we can run some algorithms on rasters. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, leave a comment down below. I'm working on getting uh, all these PyQGIS tutorials up on the website with code. I'm a little bit behind, but I think I've got through tutorial eight or nine at this point. Um, so you can check the website out and hopefully I'll have that up by the time you get there. If not, be patient. I'm working on it. So thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day.